Okay, so this is part of a um, a fun thing we're doing because it comes up all the time. And I thought, all right, let's just get it out there. SSA tells us that there are a lot of myths that go on about the history of the SSA, um, political maneuverings, all these kinds of things. And who knows what the answers are? I certainly don't. I just work within the system. But anyway, they do have a, a very interesting page or two where they are debunking some internet myths. Now they refer to them as internet myths, but I think they existed before the internet became a, a household um, piece of technology. Anyway, so I thought we'd go into it because it's funny in, in little pieces because I have about 10 minutes right now before I head into something else. So I thought this would be fun. Um, the first one they talk about is Franklin Roosevelt. Um, and a, apparently one common form of the myth is that he introduced the Social Security slash FICA program with five promises. They say that he, the, the myth says, or the alleged myth says, that he promised that participation in the program would be completely voluntary. Number two, that the participants would only have to pay 1% of the first $1,400 of their annual incomes into the program. Three, that the money the participants elected to put into the program would be deductible from their income for tax purposes each year. Fourth alleged promise that the money the participants paid in would be put into the independent trust fund rather than into the general operating fund and therefore would only be used to fund the social security retirement program and no other government program. Keep in mind, social security disability wasn't part of the program back then. So it refers to retirement only. And number five, the alleged promise of Roosevelt was that the annuity payments to the retirees would never be taxed as income. So let's just go into those. Myth number one, that President Roosevelt promised that participation in the program would be completely voluntary. This is what the SSA tells us. Persons working in the employment covered by Social Security are subject to the FICA payroll tax. Um, and they explain that like all taxes, this has never been voluntary. They say from the first days of the program to the present, anyone working on a job covered by Social Security has been obligated to pay their payroll taxes. That makes sense to me as a response. They do note that in the early years of the program, however, only about half the jobs in the economy were covered by Social Security. Um, as many of you probably know, there are jobs today that are not covered by Social Security, where if you work for them and make a paycheck, you do not have to pay Social Security taxes. Of course, you're not gonna get Social Security later on that work either. But there are some that are exempted of sorts. A lot of times it's government jobs. It used to be a lot more. There were a lot of teachers that didn't have Social Security, but they got their teacher's pension. Now they usually pay into both and get both. So they go on to say that one, one could work in a non-covered employment and not have to pay the FICA taxes, but then they would not be eligible for the Social Security benefit later. So in the indirect sense, they go on to say, well, it is voluntary. You could voluntarily work in a job that does not require you pay FICA tax. And you're voluntarily not going to get Social Security benefits later either. Um, if the job was covered, however, it was always mandatory um, that you paid in. So if it's if it's it's considered a job covered by Social Security, you always had to pay the Social Security taxes. They point out what I was saying before that there um, have only been a handful of exceptions to the rule of mandatory paying of FICA taxes, um, generally involving persons working for state local governments. And again, teachers, police officers, um, maybe it was fire departments, you know, the non-voluntary kind. Um, yeah, so they could apparently voluntarily choose to have their employment not covered or not covered. I don't know how the people felt. I, I know I, you know, over the years I spoke with people who are very disgruntled that they didn't have social security in the amount they expected um, because they didn't pay the social security taxes on a particular multi years of earnings. Um, and I don't know if they were voluntarily able to not pay into social security or not. Here they're suggesting that it was, you know, you could voluntarily choose to pay into social security if you're a government worker or not. Um, 
So of course, when we're at jobs like that, sometimes we don't understand the benefits and the, you know, we always want to say no to contributing part of our paycheck to something. Um, sometimes I guess it can come back and bite us. Uh, myth number two, that President Roosevelt promised that the participants would only have to pay 1% of the first $1,400 of their annual incomes into the program. The SSA tells us that the tax rate in the original two, um, sorry, 1935 law, so we're going back, you know, we're breathing up on uh, 100 years now. Um, the tax rate in that law was 1% each on the employer and the employee. As you know now, it's over 6% on each employee and employer. So not only has our as inflation expanded our income dollars, instead of just the percentage not changing, but the government getting more money because of inflation, because 1% of a bigger amount would be a bigger amount. Of course, those taxes, those percentages have creeped up. And I think that's what a lot of people have a problem with. Percentages, in theory, should stay the same, unless someone's, you know, producing a bit of waste, perhaps. Um, or making the program something that it wasn't intended to be. So anyway, going back to it, 1% each on the employer and the employee on the first 3,000 of earnings. Uh, they say that rate was increased on a regular schedule in four steps so that by 1949, so that would be what, 14 years after the beginning of the program, the rate would be as high as 3% each on employer and employee on the first $3,000. As I said before, now it's over 6% each. Um, and that that was from subsequent increases, not part of this four-step thing that they anticipated. But the government has since, um, makes they talk about it now. They talk about increasing the tax, the tax amount on us and our employers, because we each pay half if we are employed. If we are self-employed, we pay both halves ourselves. Um, you know, they talk about increasing that so that there could be more money because there's never enough money. I guess they never just think about ways to save better, right? Uh, without hurting the beneficiaries uh, for what is needed. Okay, the figure was never 1400 though they point out and the rate was never fixed for all time at 1%. On this page, by the way, they have the text of the 1935 law if you ever wanna read it. Um, so I will link a button at the end to this page I'm looking at. And from there you can see uh, under myth number two where you can find the 1935 law. Myth number three, President Roosevelt promised that the money that participants elected to put in the program would be deductible from their income for tax purposes. As I say, flat out states, real quick, there was never any provision of law making the Social Security taxes paid by employees deductible for income tax purposes. In fact, in fact, this is interesting, the 1935 law expressly forbid this idea in section 803 of Title VIII. And they give a link to where Title VIII can be found right on this page that I'm going to um, send you over a button for towards the end of this. Myth number four, President Roosevelt promised that the money the participants paid would be put into the independent trust fund rather than into the general operating fund and therefore would only be used to fund the Social Security retirement program and no other government program. So this is where you hear this a lot. Oh, they've been stealing the money. They've been borrowing from the fund, da, da, da. Um, I knew there was a little silliness to some of the, um, those kind of mythical allegations, but uh, I mean, I think they do a lot of other stupid things with the fund, but that might not be one of them. So here the SSA says that the idea is basically correct. However, that the statement is usually joined to a second statement to the effect that this principle was violated by subsequent administrations. So they're saying the myth is usually combined with a, a, an allegation that the principle of keeping the fund separate was violated by various federal administrations over the years. They go on to say, however, there has never been a change in the way the social security program is financed or the way the social security payroll taxes are used by the federal government. The social security trust fund was created in 1939 as part of the amendments enacted in that year. So remember, if the law came out in 35, four years later, they create the fund. From its inception, the trust fund has always worked the same way. The, the Social Security Trust Fund was never put into the general fund of the government. Most likely, this myth comes from a confusion between the financing of the Social Security program and the way the fund is created, is, I'm sorry, is treated 
in federal budget accounting. They said starting in 1969, due to the Johnson administration in 68, the transactions to the trust fund were included in what is known as the unified budget. This means that every function of the federal government is included in a single budget. This is sometimes described by saying that the Social Security trust funds are on budget. This budget treatment of the Social Security trust fund continued until 1990, where the trust funds were again taken off budget. This means only that they are shown as a separate account in the federal budget, but whether the trust funds are on budget or off budget is primarily a question of accounting practices, and it has no effect on the actual operations of the trust fund itself. Okay, and you know, I just wanna put an ad in here and I have not researched this uh, of late, so don't hold me to it. The SSI funds are not part of the social security trust funds. And they in fact may be part of a general fund, general um, operating or other fund. Um, so when we do get taxed, so that we support the SSI welfare program. That is not part of social security trust fund. Um, it's confusing, I think, because of the acronyms and the fact that the social security administration administers the SSI program part and parcel as they do the social security program, because the same questions are involved in terms of disability, you know, the medical questions, but it is definitely a different fund. So when we worry about, um, SSI welfare being paid out and people get all, you know, get the short hairs all on a bunch about it going to people who don't deserve it or aren't disabled or whatever, whatever. Um, that is not implicating the social security trust fund. Okay. Uh, whether or not it's right or not, it's just, it, it, whether or not the, the abuses are occurring, it doesn't affect the social security trust fund. So don't, do not conflate any kind of negative or there with being hurtful to the social security trust fund is the way I would look at it. Okay, it was now myth number five with regard to President um, Roosevelt. They say that he promised that the annuity payments to the retirees, that would be those monthly payments we get, um, would never be taxed as income. And the SSA says, originally social security benefits were not taxable income. This was not, however, a provision of the law nor anything that President Roosevelt did or could have promised. It was a result of a series of administrative rulings issued by the Treasury Department in the early years of the program. And they give a link to where the treasury rulings can be found. So you can, again, hit on that button at the end. In 1983, Congress changed the law by specifically authorizing the taxation of social security benefits. This was part of the 1983 amendments. I think that might've been under Reagan. I'm gonna double check. And I do know that subsequent to that, I think it was Clinton that jacked up the rate um, even higher. Um, yeah, so it was part of the 1983 amendments and this law overrode the earlier administrative rulings from the Treasury Department, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so five myths um, that all refer to the beginning of the Social Security program and President Franklin Roosevelt. Um, there are, there's a whole other set of myths that have more to do with other things subsequent. So we'll get to those in a different video, but I just thought it was interesting. I will I will link this for you guys in the button above and um, you can read it for yourself. I thought it was kind of interesting because, you know, rumors, conspiracy theories, as well as deniers. It's all out there. I'll talk to you later. Bye.